Dude, who is calling you? It's midnight. On this episode of Motion Auto TV. <laughs> Guys, we're at the shop. It is late. It is 11 o'clock at night. We just closed out the last video of getting the engine installed. The engine, transmission, twin turbos, beautiful intake manifold, remade in USA. I can't believe how good it is. The ditch works injectors. We have a lot of things to do to this thing to get it basically running and driving today. But we have a little bit of an issue. What is that? Crashed my car, need a bumper painted now because I crashed my car. So I got it all set up. I just need your help to spray it. Yeah. I got paint, I prepped it, cleaned it, I did everything you told me to do, yep. and I think we just... Yeah, so basically he's making it as easy as possible as it is for me. So it's kind of weird, it's like my own little shop. So he got some single stage red. Yeah, I don't know, the bumper's trashed anyway, so I just needed to, I just wanted to match and it's a drift car. So we're gonna mix up a little bit of this paint. Let's go look at the bumper real quick. All right. This is basically a, a zero Fox car. Yeah, zero this, Fox? well, not not the car. No, I like the car, but the it was the bumper I like could find. And, yeah, it's it's trashed, but it'll look better all in one color and not green because my car's red. So basically this is just like, literally scuff it, shoot it, done. With this, I should literally spray it for five minutes, maybe yeah, 10 minutes. and then we let it sit overnight. Let it sit overnight and yep. it should be okay kind of tomorrow. Maybe in the morning we'll pull it out in the sun. Okay. Let it kind of bake. bake a little bit more because yeah. it's single stage with no clear coat. So mix up some paint, we get her sprayed for Grant. Sweet. And then we, <laughs> we gotta get back to work on this thing. You have a little more motivation to, I was, than I do. I was trying to get Grant to uh, rebuild the axles. I was like, Grant, have you ever rebuilt axles before? I said yes, and then I quickly said no. No, 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 I've never done that before. We have to do that at some point in this video too, because this thing, by the end of this video, it's gonna start and it's gonna move under its own power, which we're close, we're kinda close. Needs a diff, needs some things. We gotta get to work. Are you gonna film me? Yeah, uh, you're teaching me how to do this, so, so I think I'm, it's I'm interesting. I'm teaching Grant how to paint, um, or how to like, just a quick thing. So sh showed him the little, Info sheet, since this is single stage, four to one. So we have four parts of this to one part reducer. So what you do is you take this little cup right here and you go to the four. Four, four to, to one, one mark, okay. So then like, let's say you wanna mix to two. So you go to two on the four and then you go to two again and then that's four to one. Oh. Cause that, that two is big and that two is small. So if you wanna mix up here to 10, you, this is all the way 10 right here and then that's, you only put that much harder in it right there. Interesting. So it's really easy. So if you do eight to one like that, which you, I don't think you do anything eight to one, mostly it's like one to one is like base clear, base coat, and then you, most clear coats are like two to one with like 10% like reduce or something. Interesting. Like it's, it, that's like such a simple thing, but like it, you're almost If you confused. don't know how to read a mixing cup, mm -hmm. it's probably, it, I would assume it'd be really difficult, so. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be kind of confused, but. So this is, this works nice when you only want to pull out, pour out like a little bit of paint and save the can. So that Because if you don't tape it, you'll trash the can. Yeah, or you just have to sit there and clean it and it's not that fun. So I always just tape, especially like these little things, you just pour out just a little bit. It's kind of genius. So we got Grant's bumper all sprayed and ready to go. Didn't take that long. Like I think I was spraying for like a total of five minutes. I uh, just cleaned up the paint gun, ready to go, but back to work. He headed home. It is 12.15 at night and uh, we're gonna go rebuild a CV axle in the bathroom. You what? Here we are boys in the FIA spec bathroom. Check this thing out. We got an AC machine, we got a sink wash, we got some things and there is a 20 ton press just chilling right here which is exactly what we need in order to get this CV axle out. We gotta put this guy right here. We have a socket that fits, fits the bill right there. And then, I'm gonna have to raise this up. We'll be here all day. There it is. So, been working on the axles for a little bit. Took me a, a minute to figure out how to get them apart. I guess you, you just had to use the press. Went rummaging through Tommy's stash and uh, pulled out the correct boots. I got them all laid out in kind of the corners that we were gonna do. Basically, these things are gonna be almost brand new axles. Got everything completely cleaned up. All the insides cleaned and basically just ready to put the boots and the grease and everything on. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow morning, but as of right now, it is like 2.30 in the morning. We've been here for a while cleaning, figuring out parts. I wanna get at least a little bit of sleep, so catch you guys in the morning.
All right guys, so axles are done. First time ever doing it. It turned out pretty, it wasn't too hard. It was just like figuring it out and getting really greasy, but that is for sure satisfying seeing brand new OEM axle boots on these like old ones that are typically just flinging grease all over. We have a huge list right here. That was the first thing on it. Axles, the next thing, front suspension. Keep going. plugging away at this thing. So we have the downpipe that is basically hooked up. We relocated the clutch line because we needed to figure that stuff out. We got the drive shafts in. We have the rear diff, the rear axles. We removed all of the Hikus lines and stuff going back. The Hikus is basically a rear steering rack. So it has like an eighth inch that it could actually turn in the back, like left to right to kind of make this thing drive a little bit different. I actually have a Hikus Delete that was supposed to get delivered here today, but if it doesn't, I'm just gonna weld that little thing right there and, uh, and just call that good. So moving along, making some progress. I need to weld an O2 sensor bung right here. So I went ahead and I made a mark right there. Just need to drill a hole, cut off some of these tabs right here. Everything is pretty much done in the front. We have all the zinc plated hardware on all the stuff up here. I think the only other thing that we're actually waiting on for today, which might actually come tomorrow, it's a big bummer, is uh, heater hoses. Keep plugging away, keep putting things on here until the piles of things that need to go on here are, uh, are lower, but we're getting close. So we haven't been filming a ton today. We've been doing a bunch of like minor, tiny, tiny little things. Little things like this oil cap right there. You know, it's, it was full of paint. We stripped it, we cleaned it. We kind of hit it with some scotch Bright. This thing right here, which was the cam angle sensor. I cleaned it up really good last night. It was covered in red paint. I stripped it as well. And then today I actually just kind of scuffed it real good. And I hit it with this, it's called a Luma Blast. Makes it look like brand new aluminum. Looks pretty good on there. The plan is, is to hopefully get this thing all assembled and dialed tomorrow. But I'd like to at least try and get it started tonight or at least get it almost ready to where all we have to do is put in the heater core, put in the heater hoses, put in the starter, turn the key and go. So we have a lot of things to do in that regard. We have the wiring specialties harness that we picked up yesterday, which I am really stoked about. This is their pro series harness. So it's not like an OEM series harness. So this one is gonna be ran a little bit different around the chassis slash the engine as well. So I'm gonna lay this thing out on there. I wanna get everything plugged in that I can and then uh, move forward. All right, so we got kind of the lay of the harness. So all of this stuff goes into the engine. All of this stuff right here actually goes inside the firewall through the grommet. So essentially right over here in this corner, the harness will come up right here, go through this, and then there's actually a hole that goes straight into the chassis. And that's where we're gonna mount our ECU master, plug that directly into here. Whereas previously I was gonna have the jumper harness and then I was gonna have to wire in the wideband, fuel pressure, oil pressure, all those extra sensors. Whereas all that stuff is just built into this harness, which that's really dope. hours since I last updated you guys with a clip. The engine harness is completely on. You can see we got that PRP coil kit with R35 coils. We have this loom running around over here. That thing goes into the windshield wiper motor. 
comes around, plugs into this factory harness right here. We have a bunch of stuff tucked in under the intake manifold right here. So we have the injectors coming up and then we have some extra sensors that we kind of have tied up for now. For the battery cable, uh, we ended up doing the heater hoses and a couple other little things under the intake manifold. Got the starter in it. We're just kind of moving along. We set the radiator in it and we got a brand new coil and we basically exchanged it with Tommy because what they do when they're running a twin turbo setup like this is they actually weld two six AN bungs on the top of the radiator to return the hot coolant from the turbos into here. The factory kind of has a complicated, you know, design where it goes, I guess it's, I guess it's complicated and this is the easiest, cleanest way to kind of do this setup. Good progress on that. I guess we got all the fittings and pretty much everything right here to make those lines. We just wanted to make sure that we had the actual intake on here to where, know where I had the lines and everything to run. Inside of the car, see we have the engine harness all plugged into the factory stuff. We got the EMU black plugs. We have the ECU master right here on the seat getting ready to plug that thing in but as of right now it is getting a little bit late basically one o'clock last night we were here till two and then uh, this morning when we got here we were kind of dragging a little bit so technically tomorrow is grid life initially the plan was never to actually like drive and like race this thing there Tommy kind of talked me into that of like trying to make that the goal I just wanted to kind of get this thing done here and drive it to grid life and kind of hang out with everybody and I really don't want to blow this thing up. Uh, obviously we don't have a whole lot of time to like tune this thing. So we're not going to be making it to the Friday event, but we should be there on Saturday with the car to hang out with everybody and kind of show this thing off. Hopefully if we could park it inside or whatever, I don't know it, what it's even going to look like there, but uh, yeah, we're going to go uh, back to the hotel, get some shut eye, catch up with you guys in the morning. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Guys, so it is the next morning. We have a lot of things to do. We added a couple things to our list last night. It's crazy that we were literally here all day yesterday. I didn't stop other than like 10 minutes to sit down and eat lunch. We're gonna get a lot closer today. I wanna drive this thing by the end of the day. Running, driving, tuned, hitting boost. Blake's, bre Blake's bread, bread the Blake's, bleed the brakes. Bleed the Blake's? Bleed the ble Blake's. Huh? Blood the brakes. Bleed, yep. the, bleed the something, yep. something like that. All right. So we've been cruising around the shop for the last 20 minutes, basically gathering all of this stuff to get this thing done. No thanks to Tommy. He didn't know where anything was, but Josh basically pointed us in the right direction and uh, we got everything figured out. So with this intake stuff over here, and that was, you know, that was one of the reasons why we went with the twins is Tommy was just like, you put them on, you put them in, you plug in the harness and you turn the key. I could have fabbed a downpipe, an intercooler, turbo lines, oil lines, all the things for a single turbo instead of these twins. But I'm still stoked. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try the twins in the 32 and see how that, that whole thing is. We could always swap this out to the Arctic Manifold and the Garrett Turbo when we get back to Colorado, if we decide, if we if we don't for some reason like this setup, but I'm pretty sure that we're gonna think it's cool. There's a bunch of tiny, tiny, minor little details that we're just working through, but we're we're getting there. So we just made our AN lines for our coolant returns. So 245s, 290s, a short one and a long one, 6 AN on the radiator, pretty much ready to go. So we just got a little short guy right here. This goes in the front. So that's a good test. That's beautiful. That, that looks actually really nice. This guy in the back, maybe. Do you need me to say it louder for the one in the back? You want me to say it louder for the one, the guy right here in the back, so he can hear? Radiator and shroud is pretty much ready to go in. We got this thing trimmed up a little bit right there for those AN lines. Pretty much ready to go. Got the fan clutch in there, setting ready to go. So now we just gotta take it up and go. We installed fluids. We poured oil in it. We hooked up the radiator hoses. We did transmission fluid. We did differential fluid. We did front differential fluid. We did transfer case fluid. We did a lot of fluid. I poured a little bit of brake fluid in it, but we haven't bled it yet, but that's coming soon. One of the things that I thought about right before we put the starter in it, we didn't have an oil pressure sensor. We swapped to an RB20 style oil housing to get rid of the stock cooler and stuff because we were gonna do an external, but they didn't have the right thing here in stock. So I need to order the thing for the cooler. Essentially right now we just did that, but it didn't have the factory thing for an oil pressure sensor. But we are running an aftermarket oil pressure sensor. This is a WHP sensor. ECU Master USA sells these things. I actually sell these things at emotionalperformance.com. And this thing is gonna integrate seamlessly with the ECU Master EMU Black and give us oil pressure 
all the time. If you don't know, RBs, the thing that kills them is oil pressure. Well, I mean, I guess a lot of things could kill them, but like, you know, there's oil pump gears and there's oil starvation and there's these, these things that they do. We don't want to run out of oil pressure with this thing. And if we do, for some reason, this little sensor right here will be tied to the ECU and I'll set up a parameter in there to where like, if this, then this, turn off this. And that's what I'm going to do with the ECU. And that's the nice thing about doing this thing, kind of an older, old school style build with the twin turbos and the ITBs but having this brand new wiring special these harness on it with the ECU master where you could actually control stuff instead of a rusty 1989 ECU that doesn't even know what's going on. So that's what's cool about building cars like this. We're gonna get this oil pressure sensor installed and then put the starter in it and then we might be able to play with some things on the ECU and turn it over in a little bit and see if it fires. All right guys, so we were getting ready to get this thing started. Charles ran to the store, grabbed a battery. I continued to hook up a couple of things. Got the oil pressure sensor all figured out. We were pressurizing the cooling system and we found a hole right there. And that was due to me because there is a, like a shred right here on this radiator support that needed like hammered down. And I don't think it affected the stock radiator, but it affected that radiator. So we got everything plugged in. Uh, we tried to crank it. It didn't do anything uh, because it didn't have the signal wire going to the starter. So now I got into the car I went over here and I scaled the injectors real quick. We plugged in, we cranked it for a little bit. Got, I don't know if we got oil pressure or not. Now we're basically going to go ahead and crank it and see what, what happens. The car looks so freaking taken apart right now. <laughs> it's freaking 12 o'clock in the morning. Thought we were gonna be like ready to go today by like six o'clock, like drive this thing to go eat dinner with everybody. Nope, it, we were like, we cranked it over then, but then we had a coolant system leak and then we had to replace a radiator hose and in order to, or a heater hose and in order to get the heater hose, we had to pull the starter back out of it. Right, Charles? Yeah. Whose fault was that? I think that was yours mine. probably. Not that was... Definitely not. I definitely did not tighten the hose clamp Too so much, much that it, it tore. So much that it cut. It literally cut itself. I went ahead and I fought myself for probably about a good 30 minutes trying to get this door harness in because when we put the fenders on it, didn't realize that the harness in there. So the harness comes out of there and then it goes in there and then it plugs into things. And I just beat up my fing fingers because I had the fender out like a like a seagull. Yeah, yeah we had it like pulled out it was like away seagull. from the body so that he could get his and hand behind it. I had my it. head under there. I had my flashlight in my mouth and I was trying to get that thing out. Didn't work. After all of that, we finally decided to pull the passenger side one and I said, you know what? Why we're here, the bump, front bumper is already off. Before we finalize this thing and get it going for good, let's go ahead and replace this driver's side door hinge. So I went ahead and replaced that thing. You would open the door and like as soon as you would open it, it would literally like drop. It would go thunk, and then as soon as you went to close it, it was like slamming and like raising itself up. It just felt like you're driving like a pile of trash, but now we have literally a brand new door hinge and the, the old one was just like egged out, looked like a little egg. So now we just gotta put the fenders back on it. Cooling system is holding pressure. No, right? no, 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 no. See, I just realized another issue. Those of you who don't know, this is a pressure tester. Um, cooling the system. coolant system so you can pressurize it without actually putting liquid into it, right? We had to put old heater hoses on because the new ones didn't show up. We replaced the one that went bad that I cut, I'll take ownership for it. Mm -hmm. It now appears that the old ones that we left on there are also doing the same thing, so. Oh my goodness. That sounds like something with a turbo. Pull out the soapy water, I guess. We... See, this is the thing, is like, getting the engine and tranny in there and like getting it to start is no problem. No it's problem getting whatsoever. Everything, everything else around it. And like, even today, I put the radiator fan in, well, guess what? It was the wrong radiator fan and it touched the thing and it made noise. It's just a process. And there's a reason oh. why Tommy and his guys right can there. do a build like this. You wanna this. get a shot of that? What is it? Yeah. Bubble city, baby. Well, Soapy good. water is your best friend, boys. You gotta fix that leak. We gotta put the air intakes on here. We don't have math deletes yet, but once we do, we'll get them on. Put them on there. 
Will we make it to Grid Life? I mean, what do you we'll, think? we'll drive it there eventually. I don't know what time. Will it be after the event's over? And we say we made it to Grid Life after time. the event is over? We still got ah, to tune. tune. Still got to tune fine. it. It's fine. We just drive we it. We can like... remote in Steve. Steve can get remoted Steve, in. Steve, how you doing, buddy? Steve, love what you, buddy. You we'll see you soon. It is almost two o'clock in the morning, and I think, think, so it already runs. It, it runs. We had another leak after the heater hose, which was one of the AN fittings. So we got that all fixed. Everything should technically be ready to go. Keyword uh, there being should. But what we're gonna do is we need to put a little bit of coolant in here now that we've pressurized the system. It held it held boost for a while, like 16 boost. pounds. 16 pounds of boost. Charge piping is on. Oh, buddy, we forgot the one over Oh, we forgot the we one forgot pipe. The one but I did want to start it and give it a rev or two. Clear to, out the intercooler. To blow out the cobwebs. Tommy's had that intercooler laying around for I don't even know how long. We got some air filters from him over there. I actually brought these brackets with me. I don't know how. Yeah, you had them in the box. I like... literally, I brought those. I'm sure he has a set of those just like laying around over there. But and they're probably have, zinc coated too. We have the intakes on. We have this stuff. I mean, honestly, this setup does look pretty cool. It looks really it sick. It looks like the stereotypical GTR and the twin turbo thing right there is cool. And we have a special surprise for you guys. Don't tell it's him. Gonna it's gonna be at the end of this video. You have to wait and see, but it is just gonna complete this engine bay like no other. But you guys are gonna have to wait. But I think we're gonna start this thing and go drive it. So, I mean, you guys are getting some premium A1 quality content, but we need to put some coolant in this thing. take this thing on its main voyage we actually had the Hikest Elite show up today. I ordered it before I left Colorado and it shipped and it arrived at my house in Colorado before I left Colorado but I forgot to load it up with me. Jamie actually shipped it but the two-day priority was more like five day just chilling so. So the Hikest that's that steering rack in the back and this is what we do to replace it and that basically makes this steering rack into a solid bar and then you just have a normal car. Hikest Elite is done, and I tell you what, guys, there is nothing better than a Hikest Elite at three in the morning now because it's three ten in the morning. You know, Datsuns they sold uh, two tens, they sold five tens. I don't know if they sold three tens. If they did, maybe this is the new Datsun three ten. Three ten in the morning. Let's go for a drive. All right, maiden voyage. Let's see what it does. Are right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? I don't know. driving my GTR. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Ten, nine, yep. Ten AFR. <laughs> yeah, AFRs look great. This thing feels amazing. It's so smooth. It's so smooth. The twins are just instantaneous. They're not instantaneous, but the way they, they it feels like Tommy's R33. Does like, it? Not quite, like, cause his was on more boost, but right. like, it has that same feel. He said R33s needed about another 100 horsepower. Cause they're heavier? To, to be the same, yeah.
Dude, that just sounds so good. Like the twins. It is 5.30 in the morning here in Connecticut. We had no issues, we filled it up. We didn't get pulled over. We we're gonna be taking this thing to Grid Life tomorrow to put it on the track to see how it does. If you guys are interested in that, check out the next video, which will be in a couple days. If you guys want something that you could put on the track yourself, we are actually giving away a Nissan 350Z. All you gotta do to get in for a chance to win that thing is become a VIP member. I'm freaking tired, I'm delirious. Appreciate you guys watching this video. See you later.